um, Deputy Louise O'Reilly <coughs> to discuss the case of four workers in Limerick who were recently dismissed. Gormaigat, uh, Last Count Corla. Uh, last week I organised an AV room briefing on the campaign to reinstate the Murphy Four. The four men are members of the Unite Trade Union. I had invited uh, TDs and Senators to hear about the appalling treatment and the dismissal of these workers by the engineering and construction company J Murphy and Sons Limited, also known and more commonly known, I think, as Murphy International. Uh, the situation is this. Before Christmas 2022, four Unite members working for Murphy International in Limerick were dismissed. Uh, that four includes one Unite shop steward. Unite believes that they were unfairly singled out, victimised and targeted for what was essentially legitimate trade union activity. And Minister, our workplaces will never be safe. They'll never be safe for any worker, so long as workers' representatives uh, are not protected from victimisation. Between them, uh, the men had 50 years of service. And you know, my understanding is, without a blemish on any record, they had given good and loyal service to that company. And one of the men wasn't able to, to travel on the day, but he did send uh, a letter, and if I want to read part of it into the record, if I can. Uh, he said, it is hard to put into words how my dismissal has affected me and my family. The whole dismissal process seemed so unfair. Many people took the same, exact same action, yet only four were dismissed. It is hard to see how this can be justified. Following my dismissal, I found it very difficult to get social welfare. It was decided that because I had been dismissed unfairly, I would add, that I was not entitled to it. I had to fight a case which went on for months, during which time I received no payment, despite having paid PRSI my entire adult life. I ended up having to take an appeal, uh, which eventually decided in my favour. I found this whole process so humiliating. It has been very difficult for me to obtain another job, having been left in my 50s without a reference from my previous employer. I am now taking a case to the WRC, but I am told that this could take years. Now, I understand absolutely, because I've been on both sides of this, that there is a limit to what government can do. But I also understand that no government should stand over treatment like this, not while the same government is engaged in contracts with the company. These men were dismissed for as the union has said, legitimate trade union activity. They were not organising, actually, as it goes, for a massive pay increase. They were organising to simply have the recognised rate for the job applied to them and the terms and conditions that go along with that, which they didn't have. And they're perfectly entitled um, to do that. But now they find themselves in a situation whereby, because they were dismissed, they struggled to be able to access uh, social welfare. We've seen employers take to the courts to challenge the EROs, um, and we know that what, what happens effectively is the, uh, the increases and the, the terms that are due to workers just get caught up in a legal process. And meanwhile, in the middle of a cost of living crisis, workers can't access what is the generally agreed rate for their job. You know, many of these employers know, um, and in the case of what we call the, the, the Murphy Four, uh, it was very calculated in terms of uh, what happened. The company are exploiting a fairly significant shortfall in the unfair dismissals legislation. I mean, it's nearly worth an employer's time taking a chance on it because the, the compensation is so small for a worker in the case of unfair dismissals. It's really, really hard to prove. And when you prove it, the compensation is uh, it's very, very small. But the impact on these workers has been absolutely phenomenal. My main ask today is that government will lend its support to the campaign. I don't expect to see uh, any ministers or, or junior ministers taken to, to picket lines or protests. But this is a company that has significant contracts uh, with the state. They weren't looking for, and even if they were, by the way, there's nothing outrageous about looking for a pay rise, but they weren't looking for a massive pay rise. They were simply looking for the application of what is generally accepted to be the rate for the job. Go on, um, thank you, Lasse Cancorla. And um, I have a difficulty, Deputy, because uh, this is not a court. And this is a conversation about not just a matter that you've referenced may in fact go in front of a court in terms of a dispute resolution process. But we're talking about, and I have every sympathy with every workplace issue, but without getting into the individuals or any individual company, I'm not sure this isn't a conversation that I believe should be happening in this chamber, particularly when there are potentially live matters at stake for a different statutory dispute resolution body, and where there are reputational issues as well, that's Ken Corla. And so I 
will not, I won't get into that. And what I will do is, this is, this is a chamber for debating <coughs> the dispute resolution mechanisms generally, in dispute industrial relations mechanisms generally, but not at an individual level. This isn't a court. Ireland's system of industrial re relations uh, is well, well set out in, in, in statute law. And it is really important that the autonomy of both employee and employer bodies and their respective me members are respected in resolving their differences uh, through the statutory system. Um, the state provides the industrial relations disputes, as, <coughs> excuse me, settlement mechanisms, the Workplace Relations Commission, which the deputy has referenced, and the Labour Court to support parties in their efforts to resolve their differences. The Workplace Relations Commissions and, court, and the Labour Court are independent statutory bodies, independent of this House. And it has been the consistent policy of successive Irish governments to develop an institutional framework supportive of that system, and it's premised on the basis of freedom of contract, freedom of association, and the articulation of rights through a statutory resolution process well set out in law agreed by this House. There is an extensive range of statutory provisions designed to back up that system. And under um, the Unfair Dismissals Act 1977 to 2016 provide for a number of grounds under which a dismissal may, may be considered unfair, including membership or proposed membership of a trade union, engaging in trade union activities, whether within permitted time during work or outside working hours. Uh, and it really is a question uh, where <coughs> matters in any, and again, I don't want to get into the specifics, but in any situation where parties can come together in an effort to resolve issues outside of court outside of a, a formal dispute resolution process is generally better for the parties involved, but where that cannot be achieved, uh, there is the capacity to make a reference to the uh, a complaint to the Workplace Relation Commissions under the Unfair Dismissals Act, and complaints will be, I hope, fairly uh, heard by an adjudicating officer, but I don't believe that this is the chamber for discussing individual matters of that kind, and I'm surprised by it, frankly. Orla, and uh, I will use my time here to raise issues of concern to workers and workers' rights, uh, as is my right. Um, indeed, if there was any prospect of this uh, debate being ruled out of order, it wouldn't be happening. It is entirely appropriate to raise issues where victimisation is alleged um, and where the industrial relations mechanisms are not working for the people involved. That is a, a simple fact. Some of these workers will have to wait potentially years now. I mean, we could get into a debate about how you've underfunded the WRC and we could probably be here all day talking about that. But I don't thank you for uh, a lecture about of what is and isn't contained within the industrial relations machinery. I know that. And I also know that there have been many debates on the floor of this chamber um, in, on many, many occasions regarding workers' rights because this is an appropriate forum. I organised the AV Room briefing because I wanted to make uh, our TDs and senators aware of what was happening and aware of this serious issue and to put on the record that while this is going on, the government have contracts, um, either contracts or subcontracts, with uh, the company. Now, I welcome that you're urging the parties to come together, but I suppose I would ask you, are you going to do, are you prepared to do anything more than that? Because for these workers, they have effectively been locked out of uh, their workplace. They want to be reinstated. They just want their job back. In their opinion, they have done nothing wrong. And indeed, you know, th this may well be before the WRC at some point, but that is not a court either. Uh, this is most definitely not a court, but this is a debating chamber, and I am entitled to ask on behalf of people what it is that the government might be prepared to do. So you say in the script, uh, I would urge the parties to come together in an effort to resolve the issues. Are you prepared to do any more than that? And do you think it's acceptable that uh, these workers have effectively uh, been locked out of their own workplace? And, uh, you know, what they want to do is get back to work. What they want to be able to do is go back to earning money, which they had been doing to, uh, to keep body and soul together. Thank you. That's Ken Corla. What I said, Deputy, irrespective of the script, is that I urge all parties to resolve their difficulties uh, without getting into the specifics of any individual case. And you're entitled to use your time your way, and I'm also entitled to express my opinion. And I'm entitled also to say that the reason that I don't want to get into it is and I don't know if you assume bad faith or something on my part, Deputy, but I don't wish to prejudice any future. This is a, dis a mechanism that, is a, that may go to a dispute resolution mechanism, and I don't wish to prejudice any party by discussing it in the Dáil in advance of that. Ireland's, you know, Ireland has a robust suite of employment rights, 
and legislation to protect and support workers. And the predictability and the stability of that is extremely important, uh, and everybody has to comply with that. Um, the, I, I don't want to get into the comments on the merits of an individual case in this chamber, as it is a matter that the industrial relation bodies of the states can deal with and may yet be dealing with, and I don't want to risk prejudicing any party in that by discussing it in, in, as, as an individual case in the chamber. I, I don't think that the deputy was discussing the details of the case. I appreciate what the minister is saying very much so. I'm very aware of that. But I don't think the details of the case, and I think the deputy is experienced in relation to industrial relations, and I don't think... Yeah, I don't... Uh, well, um, I think she was looking at the role of the government in this. And I, 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 leave, it, and I leave it exactly. with that. The answers and the questions have been given. I see it from both sides. Thank you. Now, we're...